We're at the end of week five. Any amount of chat makes you want to throw up. So what have we learned? Just the radiotherapy, pretty okay. Radiotherapy and chemo, and chemo just knocks the pants out of me. But everybody reacts differently, it's how you react to the treatment. <sighs> That's regular. They want you to keep speaking, and they want you to keep swallowing, certainly in my case. Paracetamol water, bucket, and tissues. My throat's on fire. The, because of the chemo, um, they don't eat. So my weight's gone from over the five weeks, 91 to 80. So in a weight loss way, that's tremendous because you most of us would like to do that, but actually it's causing the doctor's concern. So I've got to try and keep this weight for the rest of this week. Uh, and then that should be treatment finished. And a two week period, because the effects come later, remember that? So you still get the effects for another two weeks. And they should pass and then you should start to recover. So for right now, all I'm trying to do is keep my weight at where it is. You're not gonna put weight on. And I can't consume anywhere near what's being asked of me. When you swallow, it makes you wanna throw up. Um, like I said, I've taken physically, I've, I've, I still walk down to the hospital and I still walk back, it's only 20 minutes. As you go through your treatment, you are checked um, that you get an office and you get assessed how you doing, what you're eating, how you're feeling, there's all of that. You're not just zapped and then set, no, it's, it's, it's quite intense. <coughs> On one of the occasions, we're speaking to Katie, Katie Yip, and we took the old power to ask her a few questions. My name is Kate Yip, I'm a specialist head and neck review radiographer. So I work as part of the head and neck team that support patients through radiotherapy. So I work alongside the consultant, the dietitian, the head and neck nurse specialist and the speech and language therapist to provide support from the very beginning of radiotherapy all the way through to the end of radiotherapy. So looking after side effects, giving advice, um, sorting out any medications that might help that person get through their, their radiotherapy treatment that a little bit easier and, and more comfortably. I do, I do any amount of chat, it triggers my retching feeling and I, that becomes more of a thing at the end of the day. So that's when I have I take the morphine just to calm everything down. Mm -hmm. I think you need to be taking things a little bit more regularly than you are from a pain control point of view because mm -hmm. we want to keep you comfortable rather than try and hit the pain when it, it's built up and, and then it's painful. So the paracetamol ideally to be taking it regularly throughout the day, so four times a day, mm -hmm. spacing that out. The morphine is a really good painkiller. It's a good hard hitting, mm -hmm. quick it's a fast acting. Today was my last flucone. Fluconazole? Yeah. Yeah. There is, okay, I'm sure there's a, there's, there's a discernible difference between rushy nonsense and just the nonsense I'm going to get anyway. <laughs> but that's unconscious. That is my last one. And I think I do not want that stuff coming back. Mm -hmm. um, so does that... Do we, do we roll into another or do we leave that and see if anything comes back? 
We would leave it now, yeah. So you've had the course. So if there was any thrush there, then the, the course that you've had should have cleared that up. Uh -huh. We can introduce another course of, of the fluconazole if it comes back, which you know, you are more susceptible at, for it at the moment because your saliva is not doing the job that it, it normally does. Mm -hmm. Normally saliva helps bacteria and debris in your mouth move along and, and you get rid of it easy enough, but because things are stickier and, and drier in your mouth, bacteria tends to sit, so the thrush does develop fairly easily. The ulcer that lives on the side of the tongue, I don't think that's helping. No. Can I have a look? There you go, have a look. <laughs> oh, it's quite a, quite an impressive one. Uh huh. Just bring your tongue to the other side, just so I can have a look. On a positive note, it's looking nice and clean in there. So yeah. there's, there's no sort of real signs of that that thrush being there. It's looking like your your mouth is is clear of of any sort of extra debris and and build up of anything. So you you're doing a good job at keeping it clear and clean. Well, that's lots of mouth. Uh, yeah. Right, that's lots of salty mouth rinse. Yeah. Well, it's fun. Yeah, it's pretty pants. I mean, but everybody in here's got pretty pants things. So, does the white liquid that we gave you help with your suspension? Mouth? Yeah. I don't massively take it. I could take it. Um, that's the antacid and acetylcholine. Oh, yeah. Um, <clears throat> Just thinking from a, an ulcer point of view. Um, either the the green mouthwash, the Diflam, or the, the white liquid is designed to, to give you local anaesthetic. If you haven't got it, let me know tomorrow and I'll get it ordered. It's, it's a numbing mouthwash, so you can use it as a normal mouth rinse, but it's got a numbing property to it. So same as with the white liquid, although the white liquid is good because you can swallow and it coats all the yeah, way down. Yeah, yeah. The mouthwash is purely for, for inside your mouth, so yeah. you can swish it round spit it out and then it should numb what's what's in your mouth yeah. at the end of the day it's uh it's more annoying than anything you know what I mean? yeah. uh, because it's just a constant you can't ever get to um just trying to get food to go in soups and everything but i think that my own grinding thing is everything tastes very salty yeah. and i can't tell if that's just because i'm into see rinse and i'm that without or if it's the other thing. And when I take that white stuff, after it, it kind of goes, yeah, it's nice. And I'm about three mouthfuls, it's all still there. And then I think the fourth mouthful, I've washed it all off with whatever I'm drinking or taking. Mm -hmm. And then when I back into that, through the quite pronounced, yeah. um, uh, like, like um, just quite a raw pain, as if you, know, as if you just peeled a load of flesh off it. Yeah. That kind of fiery. Uh, the other option that we've got is another... Um, gel. It's a bit like Bongella, mm -hmm. but it's a thinner one so that and it can cover the whole of your mouth. So it, it comes as a sort of thinner gel that you can swish around your mouth and spit out and it coats. If you've got a couple of ulcers, it's really good for that, or quite a big one. It can give you a bit more coverage mm. and create sort of just a, a basic barrier over the top of the ulcer, same as, as the, sort of the Bongella does, really. All, all my concerns are um, so I'm getting zapped, so my neck is coming up and um, like it's gonna because it's been microwaved the whole time um so that's but but kind of round all around the mouth which is the entrance to everything <clears throat> that's horrible so it's gonna be around there so that's quite i oh mean that's quite itchy a lot you don't feel anything you definitely don't feel hungry you have yeah. no compulsion to eat and just even or eat or swallowing at all, yeah. just anything you don't. So I did hit that pocket. I don't think my weight's going down. I think I'm better at food going in now. But the knock on to that was the suspension of one of the chemo's, or is that my chemo has been suspended? And it's about understanding. For my side, you think, oh, you don't want any interruption in the treatment because surely, surely that's been worked on. What a way and what the period is, and if we get all of that, then that'll be tremendous. And any variation on that. For me, mm. it's kind of oh, is that going to affect? Or can you can you suspend one or two of them until the radiation is finished, and then do that just dependent on the patient and how they're reacting to both sets of treatment? How is that? Yeah. Well, our focus at the moment is your radiotherapy. We don't want any delays or pauses in the radiotherapy. That is the mm -hmm. primary treatment that we need to focus on at the moment. So the chemo was always 
a bonus really cool so at the moment she said no chemo this week and i think it was worth giving your body that that break mm -hmm. from from battling both of things get your, your your pain sort of under better control and get you get you back up to feeling a little bit better in terms of getting the nutrients in and things we'll look at it on monday when she sees you on monday to review whether it's we can sort of start up with the chemo mm -hmm. again or whether it's again worth just focusing more on the, the radiotherapy at the moment so radiotherapy is our focus and then if we can get some more chemos in you great you've had um how many have you had with us now the chemos wise i think three it does get to this point where we need to decide whether it's worth putting your body through battling both treatments or mm -hmm. whether we need to focus on, on just getting yeah, it through the, okay. the radiotherapy so often people don't complete the full courses of chemo we, we get in as much That's as we can but um we've got three in you which is a good start and then we'll just sort of review it next week with Dr. Philippe and we'll review it on Monday. Oh that's good, I feel better about the understanding that it's not, I think, I think, no I know that everything I think is what almost everybody thinks is you come in and you think it's, so you so get radiotherapy and, and chemo and that's what you're getting and it's a blocker and a yeah. new and a movable thing and it is, it's a, it can be moved back and forwards and from a chemo yeah from a radiotherapy we need to five days a week for the full six weeks um and we don't want to be for radiotherapy to really be effective we need to give you the full the full amount so um there's no leeway there's no break no, I, I think that the that's what i'm saying I, as far as i can see i can't when it got bad there was a kind of a week ago i think i hit all of them, which was the, maybe slightly more, the, the, the thrust thing was like. It makes a huge oh, difference. Why is that having an octopus in your head? That is just the most yeah. get out of the thing. That, that's just weird. And then the, that kind of, you, you do just hit an air pocket where you're just sort of hanging there thinking, God, it, I'm not doing anything now. I'm just hanging here. Yeah. Uh, and so I think once those are passed and then you get a sort of vague game plan you think I will drink this freaking drink I will drink just how many enjoy are you having a day? I'm so far to date one uh, I was told I, if I'm not eating food I had to get like six of them yep. that's pretty tough but I do sit for hours on end telling my, I, I, but it's like trying to master telekinesis you're like that go in go yeah. in and swallow go I'm trying. I did get up to four in one day, which I thought was quite tremendous. It's um, a good effort. I took, <laughs> and then I tried some noodles the other day, and that, that was just like wet string. What was the point? Yeah, the entrails are there to, to supplement your dose. If you are managing meals, then you don't have to push for that full six. The six are there to give your body the exact amount of calories, proteins, uh -huh. and nutrients, everything it, it needs to function and to, to cope with the radiotherapy. Yeah, you, your weight at the moment, so since Monday, it's, it's stabilised out, and that's what we're looking for now. To, to increase your weight at this point would be very difficult. Mm -hmm. um, but if we can maintain and, and stabilise it as it is, that's, that's our, our goal, really. Um, so I think if you're managing those two, two soups a day, any snacks in between? Well, <laughs> it takes you long enough getting through those. Oh God, snacks. No. No, that's okay. Yeah, I snack on my um, my dissolvable headache stuff, or maybe a bit of morphine. <laughs> but I'm snack. Everything's big. Everything is just like I keep saying to people: to best understand what it is, have a slightly sore throat, and then every time it's meal time, drink drink a half pint of cooking oil. Mm. And that's what, oh, it's food time. Where's my half pint of cooking? Yeah. It, it, it's that much of a, oh my God. And yeah, there's no enjoyment in it. There isn't yeah. any. And I'm not complaining, I'm just, but because just to give you, because people go, in, oh, you'll love this, it's cake. And you go, <laughs> that's what your name for it. It's, it's the same stuff, I'll just scratch my face off. It's horrible. And everything is. So. It's, it is really difficult. It's often difficult to explain to people when you've lost your taste, when all you can focus on is the texture of, of something that you're putting down you. And because food is such a social thing, it's something that you do to enjoy, you do it with family and friends.
So to lose that element of enjoyment from food it is difficult to deal with. And when, when things you know aren't going to taste the way you, you want them to or you expect them to, it's a massive battle with yourself mentally to, to push and to focus on food as a, a unit of fuel rather than a, something that you are going to yeah, enjoy. Yeah, so yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. you know your body needs a certain amount of energy units to, to get through and then to cope with it. So it's focusing on counting down. I know with this, ensure I'm going to be getting this amount. Mm. It's just like taking down to two more weeks of that to go. In. in regards to the next coming week, again, I think we sort of said last week that there shouldn't be anything new appearing. So there's no side effects that you haven't already noticed to some degree. So mm -hmm. I don't think there'll be any surprises over the weekend for you. It's more likely to be much of what you've already experienced, getting a little bit more irritated, a little bit more uncomfortable, which you've got everything at home for to sort mm -hmm. of battle it if, if that does happen. No, that is a good, fair overview of how I would understand it and how you understand it. I, I get that, and it's all, it is all that you kind of think. Trying to explain to people, you think, well, there's an awful lot of sitting up in bed. <laughs> and go like that. Treatment ones is quite peaceful. This is really annoying, and it goes on forever. And that, so what, if I was going to say, say cancer is really annoying. Yeah. That, that's just what it is. Um, I think when we're treating someone like here, it impacts on so many things, like your, your talking, your, your eating, which is takes up such a big part of, of day-to-day -day mm. life and, and all the things you enjoy, all the things you do, whether it's for work or just a sort of enjoyment. So we do upset the balance of, of life a lot just getting through this treatment regardless of the sort of the diagnosis and everything else so and unfortunately although you finish in two weeks we know it's not going to be treatment's finished you'll be back to your normal self we know it's going to be a process then of of building you back up and, and getting getting things back to, to where they were and it'll be sort of a, a period of time of, of lots of support from from the whole team but we'll, we'll get you there that's the Katie yep stuff that's it <laughs> Katie will get you there and I know she will Say, so even you feel better, don't you? <laughs> Thank you very much for that. Some side effects that I'm getting. <clears throat> One is muscle wastage. I've mostly taken, I don't <clears throat> go out or sit in company or anything like that. I would take myself to my bed, so there's a bit of um, muscle atrophy going on, so that's fading a bit. And to be fair, <clears throat> um, there's a lot, there's, you, you, you may well see it, but there's, my face looks a lot less, my shoulders, everything looks a lot, all the weight's dropping. Um, tired, like you don't know, tired. <clears throat> the point, of course, is that chemo, really, is all in there zapping, you want to break it all down, so your system's much, much weaker. Uh, my tongue, <sighs> which is again all the zapping. It tastes very metallic. Just feels metallic. <clears throat> Other than that, and um, the, although as a Scotsman I start on a pale bluey hue, and the longer I go on, I'm, I'm more and more looking at that actor <coughs> who was in The Born Identity and uh, is in Madam Secretary, and looks like this. And he's very gray. And that's what I look like. If I stand too near the fridge, I can disappear. I do speak bits and pieces, but I don't speak all the time or particularly often. I know people in the place who have therapy or around the throat, same area roughly. And the conversation with them is they're eating a potato or, or ready break or just lots of endless normal food and I'm stunned by that but it's about how you specifically you personally react to the treatment it's not oh, this will happen so this is how it's affecting me uh, my neck is a ring of red all the way around because obviously oh, it's getting microwaved the whole time so not long ago And we'll see how we're going with that. Getting there.